Today, I'm going to show you how to create the bouncing letter effect inside of Motion. There are two ways that I create this effect inside of Motion. One is to use the built-in behaviors, and the other is to hand animate each letter. The way that I normally do it is by hand animating it, and I'll get into the reasons why, so I'll start with that. We're going to start off with the project, and the only thing I've done is created two shape layers for my background, one blue, one white, uh, and you can see them right there. And then I also have a group of our two text elements, Amity Island. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to create a group for each word. I'm going to name this one Island, and this one Amity. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take, um, we're going to start with Amity, and I'm going to duplicate it so all our font size and everything is the same, and I'm going to drag it up onto that group. Now I'm going to do any changes to the formatting of this text that I want to do before I start, and the only thing I'm going to do right now is add a drop shadow. And then I'm actually going to come and change the text layers face to a different color so it's easier to I'm just going to make it a grayish color. And you'll see why in a second. So now we have a duplicate of our first text up here. So what I'm going to do is so double click it to get into edit mode and change it to just the first letter. Then in our properties in transform, I'm going to use the x-axis position slider and slide it over until it is right on top of the other one. Our original text template is just simply there to help us get the kerning and the spacing right. All right, there we go, perfect. So once that's in place, we're going to make sure that our playhead is at the beginning, and we're going to add some keyframes to this. To do that, we're going to go into our properties, transform, and we're going to make sure that we only add keyframes to the Y axis. And you'll see in a little bit why. I'm going to create a keyframe, move six frames forward, select a new keyframe, then go three more keyframes, and add another keyframe. The last keyframe is going to be our in position. So if we go back one, we need this one to be where we've gone too far up. And then our starting position needs to be down below the frame. Just like that. So what we have now, if we push play, that's perfect. So what we need to do is just make sure that our playhead is now past our animation and we're just going to duplicate the first letter however many more times we need it. In this case, four more times. So I'm going to press Command D four times. Okay. The next step is to select our next letter and change it to what it needs to be. In this case, M. Go to our properties. And this is why it was important to only set a keyframe on the Y axis. Now we can move this over into proper place without adding any keyframes. Select the next letter, change it to the proper one, and drag it over. And then basically do this with the rest. Now that we've done all our letters for the first word, we can turn off Amity from our text template group. Now if I push play, nothing that exciting, but we're right on track. For the time being, I'm going to go ahead and disable this group, and we're going to start on our next line, which is Island. So I'm going to duplicate it, drag it up to our Island group. And in our text template, I'm going to change the color so that it's easier for us to realize again when we're lined up. And 
and once again change any formatting I'm just gonna add a drop shadow for now double click on it do our first letter go to our properties transform once again drag it on the x-axis once we're there we're gonna park our playhead at the beginning and we're gonna do the same thing again as we did with Amity we're gonna add a keyframe to the y-axis move forward six frames add another keyframe then move forward three more and add another keyframe our last keyframe once again is our ending position so it's perfect where it's at we're gonna to go to our middle keyframe and now it's gonna be coming bouncing from up to down if that makes any sense so we're gonna drag it down a little bit below go to our first keyframe this one we want to be drug up and it'll be basically be out of sight out of frame when we're done so now we can see that we have that once again we want our playhead to now be after all of our animation and we're going to duplicate it just as we did before for how many letters we need I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead a little bit so you can see and not be bored by what I'm doing okay now that we have all those in place and animated as well we can completely hide our text template group and if we watch it from the beginning we can see once again it's done it's not very inspiring but it's right where we need to be so once again here's the trick I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here on our timeline starting with the first letter I'm gonna leave it where it's at we're gonna go to the next letter and we're gonna offset it by pulling it forward two to three keyframes we'll go three and we're gonna do it with each letter All right, so now if we turn that on, and we can see what we have. Boom, looking much better. Go back to the beginning. I'm gonna hide our Amity, go back to Island. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna leave the first letter at the beginning, but then I'm gonna drag each letter by three frames to the right. So there we go. I'm going to turn both on and we'll see what we got. Looking pretty good. Now we just need to make it so we can't see the letters before they actually pop onto the screen. To do this, I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to call this mask. Oops, if I could spell. Although we actually only need one. Make sure our playheads at the beginning. I'm going to create a shape which will be big enough to cover the entire bottom word like that and so it's not confusing I'll change the color to something dramatic that looks pretty dramatic so the trick now once again is to create an image mask for each of these different groups so I'm going to start with Amity. Go to our object and add an image mask. Once we're in there, it's going to ask what our mask source is going to be, and we're going to select the shape we just created. And you can see it actually disables the shape, which is exactly what we want. The only problem is, is inside of our inspector, we can see that our text is gone. We just need to change the mask blend mode to subtract. And there we go. Now we're going to do the same thing for Island. Go to Object, add an image mask, and once again we're going to drag our same mask into the mask source. And this time we do want it to be Add. So now, when we play it, it just pops on. And that's it for animating it by hand. 
So to show you how to do it using Motion's built-in behaviors, using a text sequence, I'm going to take just this one word here, Amity, as before, and I'm going to use my guide here to kind of show you um, the framing. So I'm going to add a text sequence, sequence on text. I'm going to rename this to Bounce. I'm going to change the spread to 3. And I'm going to set a, an out point of about 1 second for this example. Then I'm going to drag it up. This is basically the bounce. This is where it's going to have gone too far and bounced up and then came back down. So while that's still selected, I'm going to drag it over, offsetting it, uh, a certain amount of keyframes. Like it doesn't really matter. It could be changed later. Then I'm going to go back to behaviors and create another sequence text. I'm going to drag this one down below the other behavior. And again, I'm going to go to about one second. I'm going to set a, an out point for that. Give it a name of uh, whatever. I'm going to just call it this. I'm going to do some of the same parameters and set a uh, spread of three. Then I'm going to drag it down to the starting point, which would be off frame once our mask is in effect. And if I drag it to the beginning uh, and hit play, it works. Perfect. So you're thinking, what was so hard about this? But this is incredibly finicky. It's working right now, but if anything changes, sometimes the illusion, the effect is broken. And it's real weird how it does. So for example, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to drag this behavior down below. And as you can see, the effect doesn't work anymore. It just kind of glitches. So I'm going to move it back to the way it was again, hit play, and it's not working. The effect, we just changed back what we did, and it's not working. Yeah, see if we drag it back up on top. And let's try it again. Let's, who knows what's going to happen. The effect is working again. I can tell you that sometimes doing this will still not fix the illusion. You have to delete your behaviors and re-add it. I have no idea why this is happening. And I've actually found other scenarios using sequence text that will work. However, this is the most consistent way. Other ways that I've done it, um, it can work fine. And then when I save my project, close it, and reopen it, the effect is gone. It just it breaks it. I'm sure there are people that are maybe more smart than me in motion. Maybe somebody like Mark Spencer can shed some light on this, but um, for me it doesn't really work. So usually I just hand animate each one, which uh, as you can see can actually be done pretty quick. So that's the way I normally do it. If you know of a better way, please let me know, and I hope this helps you out. Thanks, bye.